Hello, I'm Chinedu from the Nedu Sewing Club. Welcome to Stitched. Iran Bubo is a classic design. It's been around forever and it flatters most body types. Today, I'll show you how to make one. In recent times, the Iran Bubo has been given a modern facelift with the transition from traditional fabrics like heavy laces to drapey fabrics like silks, chiffons, and satins in vibrant prints. And in terms of the architecture, the boba is a boxy blouse that is literally three folded rectangles stitched together. It's that basic. And the hero is technically a wrap skirt, if you think about it that way. Both are super simple to make. Let's get started. Four yards of fabric and bias tape in a matching color. So before you cut your fabric, it's important to take accurate measurements. So first measurement is the length of your booba. So take your tape rule, and then starting from the nape of your neck, which is your neck point, just right here, pass the tape rule down over the fullest part of your bust, all the way down to your hip line. For me, it's about 26 inches, something about that. And so that number, let's call that number length. And to that number, add a hemming allowance of about 1.5 inches because after sewing, you have to finish the edge of your blouse. So that's a um, total length, which is your length plus hemming allowance. Good. Secondly, take your hip measurement. But if your bust is wider than your hip, then take down that measurement. Good. Let's call that measurement H or B. And thirdly, to so that number H or B, add a wearing ease of four to six inches. So this is how it works. After adding that number to your hip or bust, the final number gives you your boba circumference, which is the final width of the blouse. So in my case, my hip is 36 inches. I'm adding four inches to mine. You could go as far as six inches if you wanted to, which comes about 40 inches. So that would give me the my booba circumference. As you can see, it's quite blousy already. Okay? So we call that number the booba circumference. Good. So before I go further, I'd like to tell you a few things about fabric. In terms of yardage, a yard simply means 36. That's what it means. But in terms of fabric yardage, a yard means, let me show you. It means 44 to 60 inches wide and 36 inches long. So if I measure through my tape rule, the first 36 inches is a yard and the next is another yard and so on and so forth. And then also, if you notice with most wax print fabric like this one, that is Ankara, at the lengthwise portion, there's a thin border on both ends. In most cases, you'd find the brand name of the company who made them, them the fabric, and it's called the salvage, the salvage. So that edge is tightly woven, okay? Good. So get a piece of, a piece of fabric and fold it lengthwise. Lengthwise, okay? And also fold widthwise, like this. Good job. Just smooth, smooth things down. Good. Let all the edges touch properly. And you could also pin if you like. I like doing that a lot so the things are nicely, perfectly placed properly. So here's what you'll do next. Starting from the folded edge, measure your total length, which is your length of boba plus hemming allowance in my own case 27.5 26 plus 1.5 remember and mark that down okay well in my own case i think I, i've measured this already i'll just i'll just do this for the benefit of all of you watching Mine is precisely 27 because I measured this already. Okay, so good. So next step to your booba circumference measurement, divide that by four, okay? 
and then add to that number a sewing allowance of one inch because after sewing at the sides you have to have sewing allowance for the finishing okay so let's call that quarter booba circumference plus sewing allowance so in my own case that's 40 inches divided by 4 which is 10 plus 1 inch 11 okay that's 11 so what i'll do is this i will connect the dots that are placed okay i'm just marking things up so you can see so now i'll connect the dots like so so i measured quarter booba circumference plus sewing allowance remember plus hemming allowance. Good job. I'll just pin this down just before the line so that nothing moves when I'm cutting because fabric tends to move when you cut it for some reason. Okay. And then I'll cut this along the line I drew very carefully. Good. So now I'm left with the rectangle that is my total length plus hemming, which is length plus hemming allowance, and as wide as my quarter booba circumference plus sewing allowance. Good job. So the next step is to cut out the neckline of your booba. So most boobas come with a round neckline. Super easy to do. I'll show you how to do this. So at the edge that has a double fold. So there are two ends, one is like, up. you can open that on, another one has a double fold. Draw a rectangle that is five inches wide. Just mark it out. Five inches wide and four inches long. So four by five rectangle. Just mark it out carefully. Good. And just draw it out. Like so. Good job. So the folded portion, the one that has a double fold, a rectangle that is five inches wide and four inches deep. Good. Now, you need a curved ruler to draw the neckline curve. This is really precise compared to using your hand. Okay? Now within that rectangle, draw a curve. Okay. A smooth curve within that rectangle. And then just cut along the curve line. Like so. You can see it's out so here's what happens so that's a quarter width of my booba when i open this up a round neck is taking shape already and i'll show you something really brilliant when i open it up again there so that's the hole the neckline hole when I fold it, you can see it's taking shape already. So the good thing about the lengthwise fold is that it removes the need for a shoulder seam, which is brilliant if you ask me. It saves a lot of time, okay? Okay, so the next thing to do is to cut out the boba armhole. First thing to do, turn your fabric with the wrong side facing outwards, like so. Be careful that you don't mess up the fold, the shoulder fold. So align it very carefully at the neckline and then pin carefully at the shoulder fold. Two pins will be fine just to hold things down. 
at the neckline align the front and back neatly two pins should do just so things don't move around when you're making taking measurements and another two at the shoulder yeah. good so in terms of the armhole measurements that's a generic sizing for this so for a small to medium size i'll say somewhere between a 16 to 18 inch round armhole and um, for a larger size i'd say from about 18 to 20 we can always check like in my own case i use 18 inches for my booba armhole so i'll just check i've measured 18 inches of the tape rule hold it down to make like a little circle and pass my arm through it's looking good already i like that so to that number divide that number by two for me that's nine and then come to the end the edge here and measure the armhole circumference divided by two for me that's nine so i'll just mark it out here nine and on the other side i'll mark up nine as well mark it up very clearly So what we'll do now is we'll just sew down the sides and then attach the sleeves. So you'd recall that I made provisions for seam allowance at the sides before cutting and I left one inch on both sides. So now I'm just about to stitch and here's what I'm going to do. I will be sewing inwards by one inch just beneath the armhole mark and then all the way down, you know with a one inch allowance taken into account. Same thing on the other side. So I'll place the edge of my fabric at the one inch sewing allowance point on my sewing machine. Starting from the armhole point which I marked earlier. And at about say one inch before the end I usually reduce the length of my stitch width the length of it so the smallest size so what that does is that it locks in the stitch you could also use the lock stitch at the end if you want to but that's my method so do whatever works for you and then cut so we've done one side do the same thing for the other side so i'll just remove the pins so at this point i have a booba that's like a sleeveless booba at this point so it needs sleeves just take out all of the pins good job okay so the next thing to do is to cut out our sleeves right here's what you do so determining the length of your sleeve fold the booba again so it's a quarter width like so and hold the edge just somewhere at the center of your chest just to get a sense of where the end stops so it stops somewhere here for me so just take note at that point And with your tape rule, decide how much longer from that point you want your sleeve to be. Okay? Another way of doing this is this. Remember your quarter booba circumference measurement? Bear that in mind. And hold the tape rule somewhere at your clavicle. So you get that point. And then from that point, decide how much longer you want your sleeve to be. So in my case, I'm going to extend my sleeve by... I'm thinking somewhere like a midi length for me. It could be a short length, a midi or a full, like a long length if you want. It depends on your preference. So I'll add 12 inches more. So that's the length of the sleeve. And in terms of the width of the sleeve, 
it should be the same width as my armhole naturally. So here's what I would do. So get a piece of fabric like this and fold it. Fold it. Good. Then along the length, the length, hold on. Along the length, measure your desired sleeve extension, which for me was 12. And to that number, add a sewing allowance of one inch at the beginning and hemming allowance of 1.5 at the end. So that's a total of 14.5. One, 12, and 1.5. And then for the width of the, the um, sleeve, it should be the same as my armhole circumference. So I would also use the same measurements as nine, I used before, which is 18 divided by two, which is nine, plus a sewing allowance of one inch because it will be folded and stitched before being attached to the booba blouse. Super simple. So basically a folded rectangle that is my desired sleeve length extension plus sewing allowance plus hemming allowance and as wide as my armhole or half of my armhole plus one inch sewing allowance another rectangle i said so from the beginning remember three folded rectangles sewn together so for me that's 10 which is nine plus one and so before I cut, I like to pin things down. I find that so much safe. It's so safe. So I have 10, another 10. Just measure it out carefully. And then 14.5. Good. And then I connect. the excess bit that I do need at all. There. And here. As you can see. So a fuller rectangle that is as wide as half of my armhole plus one inch sewing allowance. And as long as my sleeve length extension plus sewing allowance of one inch at the top and 1.5 inches as my hemming allowance and so do the same for the other sleeve this is for one sleeve see and for another sleeve really easy so now we have the booba body the left sleeve and the right sleeve What's left to do is to join the sleeves together and then attach to the booba blouse. Very simple. Okay, so you'd recall that I took into account a sewing allowance of one inch on the booba sleeves. So what I'll do is I'll fold it so that the wrong side is facing outwards, like so. Fold back to my rectangle again and then pin at the ends. Just a few pins. So I'll be, I'll be sewing one inch inwards from the edge. So I place the edge against the one inch seam allowance point of my sewing machine and just sew it again. Okay, so about half inch or one inch towards the end, you could either use the back stitch or lock stitch button, or you could reduce the length of the stitch, which I usually do. And then finish off. So that's one slip done. 
So just the same thing to the other sleeve. So now at this point, we have to marry the sleeves to the body. <laughs> okay, so here's what you do. So we'll turn each sleeve with the right side facing out. Okay, right side facing out. Okay, and then with the blouse still with the wrong side facing out, so sleeves right side facing out, boba body wrong side facing out. And you can tell the side that's wrong or right, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with one sleeve. So insert the sleeve. Through the armhole. Until the stitched portion aligns with the stitched portion of the blouse. You know, like putting a circle into another circle, basically. And it should fit because the sleeve width is the same as the armhole width. And it fits perfectly. Okay, just align them carefully and then pin. But just make sure that your edges are properly aligned. That's really important. It's important to sew neatly and precision. Okay. So the sleeve is inside, edges aligned, and I'll be sewing round one inch from the edge. So here's what you do. If you're using a machine like this one, an electric desktop machine, it has something called a free arm, which comes in handy for sewing narrow circular spaces like a sleeve hole or a neckline. So I'll just take this out. So that narrows up the area nicely for me. So I'll insert it's like a hole. I'll insert this into the hole, into the arm, the free arm. And aligning the edge at one inch, at the one inch seam allowance point, out so. And back. And then lock stitch. Good job. Okay. Snip everything, all the loose threads, very important. And then take out your pins and I'll show you something. Be very careful when handling pins. Okay. So now I'll reach into the hole and bring out the sleeve. It's taking shape already. You can see a booba body with one sleeve attached. Let's do the other sleeve the same way. And then pin around. Just like before, I insert the hole into the free arm. remove the other sleeve it's looking good already as you can see so that's the booba body and two sleeves attached so i'll just turn this to the right side facing out so we can see what we've done so there we are so a round neck booba and two leaves are touched. So the next thing to do is the finishing. We'd finish the neckline with some bias tape and then hem the sleeve bottom edge by folding inwards and also hem the booba bottom edge by folding inwards. Okay so at this point we will finish the neckline of the booba and we'll be doing this with some bias tape. 
I think Biostep is my favorite finishing lotion. It's flexible, it's versatile, it's affordable, and it comes in beautiful colors like this one. The thing about Biostep is that it guides your sewing. Like this is a one inch wide bias tape. It's folded, it comes pre-folded. And if I open it up, there's a demarcation. The first one is a quarter of an inch, and then half inch, and then another quarter of an inch. So it's very good in the sense that it helps you know where to put your stitches when sewing. So I'll take this, starting from one shoulder, and starting about one inch down, I'll align the edge of the bias tape with the edge of my neckline, okay? And just pin at the very bottom so that when I sew, the pins will not interfere with the machine needle. So just pin all the way around the neckline. Bias is very flexible, so it's perfect for finishing curved edges like necklines and armholes. And even dresses that have curved hemlines. Okay, so when you go all the way around, you need to have two, I would say, two ends, like extra bit of um, bias tape of about one inch sticking up at the end, and then just snip. Okay? Let me just pin this down properly. Okay. So I've gone all the way around, and then I have about one inch on both ends, sticking up like the excess. Very important. And then what I'll do is I'll align the edge. Is it just underneath the sewing machine foot? making sure that my needle hits the crease line, the quarter inch crease line on the bias tape, which is, which is effectively a sewing allowance of a quarter of an inch, which is brilliant. And then I'm making use of the free arm again. Like I said, it's good for sewing circular areas, like a neck hole or a ham hole. Good. So I'll place it at the edge ensuring that my needle keeps on hitting that crease line on the bias tape. It's really important, okay? So it just involves control at this point. You are in charge of the sewing machine. You control what it does, okay? Okay, just steady. Take your time. Okay. okay. I've done one side. Okay, now for the other side. the bias tape sewn first attached to the right side of the booba blouse against the neckline edge and then I've sewn round and I'm left with two excess bits about one inch long so here's what I'll do I'll flatten both strips at the point where they meet and then attach them. I just stitch down. Good. And then and then I reduce it to about say half an inch. Good. I'll just cut up all the excess thread. So the next thing to do is now. I will turn the bias tape inward so that it's on the 
inside of the blouse and not on the outside. So now I'll turn my booba, as you can see, we're halfway done. Turn the booba with the wrong side facing out. Good. And then I would fold the bias tape inwards fully so that it's no longer showing on the outside of the blouse. Fold it down carefully against the second crease line. It's a smooth fold. So all that's left is really just about a half inch of bias tape when I do the second fold. And then I pin again. Just pin round. It's a temporary pinning because as we're sewing, it will take the pins out. So it doesn't bother us. And we're done pinning all the way around. So as you can see, if I showed you the inside, you can't see the bias tape anymore. It's on the inside, nice and tidy. You can only see about half inch of the bias tape after pinning. And so we'll sew all the way around as close to the edge of the bias tape as possibly. Very carefully. So take the pins out as you go along. Very carefully. And lock stitch at the very end. Cut off all the excess threads. And it's looking good already. So I'll turn it, so that is the view from the inside. You can see a nice yellow border all around. And on the right side, I'll just turn this off. So as you can see, on the right side, you can no longer see the bias tip. It's nice and smooth and tidily closed up. So the last thing to do to the booba is to hem the sleeve bottom edges and the booba bottom edge. Okay. So the next thing to do is to finish the hem of both the sleeve and the booba. So there are two ways of doing this. First of all, let me turn this with the wrong side facing out. And I'll tell you the two ways of doing this. There's always more than one way of doing things anyway. <laughs> okay. So if you own an overlocking or a surging machine, simply weave the bottom edge first and then fold downwards by the hemming allowance, which in this case is 1.5 inches, and then stitch around. So the same thing for the other sleeve and the bottom. If you don't own an overlocking machine, simply use the zigzag stitch setting on your electric sewing machine. I explain how to do this in my seam finishing video. And then fold downwards as well and also sew around. If you don't want to use that method, you could use a more traditional method, which is you fold downwards at the hemming allowance of 1.5 in this case, and then tucking the edge by about a half inch, effectively leaving one inch exposed, and then sew at the edge around Either method is fine. So I'll take this out, which leaves the free arm available to use because it's a circular space. It's very convenient. So the zigzag, the mid, the mid width zigzag stitch. Super, super fast. So the edges are nicely locked in and will not unravel. So I'll do the same thing for the other sleeve and for the booba bottom. Okay, so I'll move on the other sleeve and the bottom. The next thing to do is I'll fold downwards by my hemming allowance of 1.5 inches and then I'll sew about 
one eighth of an inch or two eighths of an inch from the edge, the folded edge. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll be sewing somewhere between a quarter inch from the edge, the woven edge. Okay, still using my free arm. It's a narrow circular space. Put this inside and find a point just somewhere about a quarter inch from the edge and then sew around. So change my stitch back to a regular stitch. Okay. okay. So I'll go over the beginning and lock stitch. Done. So I'll do the same thing for the other sleeve and the bubble hem. And I'm done. I hem the bottom edge of both sleeves and the bottom. Attach faster to the neckline. Super easy. That's the boob up blouse. It looks good, don't you think? <laughs> so all that's left to do is to cut the ero. Like I said before, the ero is technically like a wrap skirt if you think about it that way. And it's typically as wide as two yards and 12 inches. So the length depends on your preference. It could be knee length, midi length or maxi. I like the maxi length. I think it's a very grown up silhouette. It's very elegant too. So all you do is just take your fabric and measure two yards and 12 inches, which is about 84 inches. And then make sure you finish the two extreme ends with a double fold. So fold inwards by about half an inch once and do that again and then stitch all the way down on both ends and you're done. Really, really easy. remember the golden tips of sewing first of all press open your seams after stitching i showed how to do this in my first video the behind the seams video secondly leave enough seam allowance before cutting your fabric and thirdly not the least but most importantly seam finishing finish your seams properly after stitching i shared some seam finishing techniques in my seam finishing video so for more sewing tips and inspiration do visit my website nedu.com and to enroll for the next NSC sewing workshop, click the sewing club link. I'll see you next time. Bye.